From Fox 13, the one to watch for weather. This is Surviving the Storm. Hi, everybody. I'm Paul Delegato. Hurricane season is back. Actually, feels like it never left. Are you ready? 2017's impact should put everyone on high alert. It's a year we won't soon forget. Hurricanes Harvey, Irma, and Maria, three fierce, unrelenting storms. Harvey bringing intense wind and rain. In August, Harvey terrorized the Houston area and the Texas Gulf Coast. Felt like 150 mile hour winds. I mean, it was whipping pretty good. The Category 4 hurricane made landfall with 130 mile an hour winds and caused epic flooding. Between uh, 20 and 30 more inches of rain could be coming down. 60 inches of rain doused the area over five days. There were daring rescues, thousands left homeless, 80 people dead, $200 billion in damages. It was the first major hurricane of the season, the first major hurricane to hit the U.S. since Wilma back in 2005. Then in September, Hurricane Irma came charging towards Florida. So it's going to go like this, move away from the water now. The Cat 4 storm battered the Florida Keys with 130 mile an hour winds. We weathered it out and stuff. We got a lot of damage, a lot of cleanup. Then made a second landfall on Marco Island as a Cat 3. Just because the storm passed, it's not safe. We have power lines down. The storm veered north through Hardy, Highlands, DeSoto, and Polk counties. Roofs have been ripped off of homes with people still inside. Winds clocked at over 100 miles an hour, then hit Jacksonville with storm surge and flooding. Hey! Hey! Tampa and St. Pete still had Cat 1 winds. Offshore winds actually drained Tampa Bay. It's difficult to say, you know, how many feet of bay we're losing. And people were seen walking out on the dry seabed along Bayshore Boulevard. 100, 150 yards, maybe even farther before you finally hit the water. But 100,000 Floridians receive federal assistance at disaster relief centers. The rain, you know, there's no work. And if things get flooded, there's no work. Then in September, Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico was absolutely obliterated. The Cat 4 storm devastated the island with 155 mile an hour winds. Irma could have been much, much worse for us. It was the second strongest Atlantic hurricane on record based on wind speed alone, an incredible 185 miles an hour. Dave Osterberg takes a look back at Irma's journey. Irma began, as many storms do, as a tropical wave emerging off the coast of Africa, rapidly gaining strength. And by the time Irma made it to the Leeward Islands, winds were already at 185 miles per hour. Category 5 storm, the strongest ever measured in the open Atlantic. But it wasn't done. It continued even with interaction with land as a Category 4, Category 5 storm. It started to significantly weaken as it made that turn after interacting with Cuba, northern Cuba, making its way up through the Keys, up through Naples. Unfortunately for those folks, but better for central Florida, they caught the brunt of the storm, especially around Cudjo Key, where they're still rebuilding parts of the Keys because of that landfall. Now, since it stayed to the east of Tampa Bay, it also allowed for next to nothing in terms of storm surge. Why? Because of the counterclockwise flow pushing water out of the bay. The east coast had several feet of storm surge and the west nothing. We had some strong winds, especially east of the center. I know Polk County, Highlands County, a lot of power outages. Could have been a lot worse if this storm had moved 50 or 60 miles further west and then come up the coast. It would have been a direct hit on the Tampa Bay area. Dave Osterberg, Fox 13. People barnstorm the supermarket, scrambled to prep their homes, and waited in line for gas. So what did we learn after Irma? Consumer reporter Sabani Banerjee has some answers. You come home to something like this, or this. It's time to file a homeowner's insurance claim. Basically what you want to do is you want to assess the damage first, and you want to do anything that you possibly can to prevent any future damage from happening. When damage happens, you need to understand your policy. 
people should be more aware of is what's included in that contents. We see a lot of folks that think that their Rolex watches are included as contents. Well, they are to a certain extent, and almost every insurance company has a sublimit of contents coverage for things like fine arts and jewelry, um, et cetera, et cetera. Buy additional coverage for high-end items and protect your belongings with either replacement cost coverage or actual cash value. For instance, do you want your TV replaced for what it cost when you bought it or what a comparable model costs today? Buy separate flood insurance. Homeowners insurance covers water damage from a busted pipe, for example, but not flooding caused by a storm. And factor in your hurricane deductible. Insurance agents say people weren't expecting the expense after Irma. And it's usually a, a number between two and five percent of the total dwelling amount. So if we take three hundred thousand dollar home, for example, and we have a two percent dwelling coverage amount, uh, we're going to have a, a six thousand dollar hurricane deductible. People would call up and say, "I have two thousand dollars worth of damage," and you'd say, "Yeah, you're on the hook." Exactly, and it's been—I mean, it's been eleven years since we've seen any kind of major storm system here in in this area in Florida, and uh, I know we've got a lot of transplants, a lot of people that don't really understand that, and. I don't think people take enough time to understand what's in their homeowner's insurance policy, what is and what's not in it. Sorbani Banerjee, Fox 13 News. In my home, our family is ready when the lights go out. We have flashlights and lots of batteries. Our outdoor solar lights brighten our living room at night. We store gallons of drinking water. Me, I like juice boxes. If the stove and microwave don't work, we have lots of crackers, peanut butter, and stuff you don't need to cook. We listen to a battery-powered radio if we can't watch TV and play cards, puzzles, and board games. We can live without power for days. Coming up. There's new leadership at the National Hurricane Center. I'll introduce you to the man in charge next. Welcome back to Surviving the Storm, unraveling the mysteries of tropical storms. I recently met with the new director of the National Hurricane Center and one of his top scientists. I wanted to find out some of the challenges they're facing with hurricane forecasting. What's your, what's your feelings looking back on this active hurricane season? You can go years without a hurricane and then all of a sudden there's, there's lots of them. But the reality is you've got to prepare as if we're going to get hit. What do we learn from these years and, and implement them in, in the years ahead? The modeling is getting better, uh, the, the science is getting better, the communication is getting better, but we're not there yet. So there, there's a lot more work to do with the education and the communication of these threats. In some ways we're a victim of our own success in, 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 in some regard because the track forecasts have gotten a lot better, I mean, but certainly we still have errors of 40 or 50 miles a day. If you look back five days before Irma arrived and you compare it to the actual track, it was outstanding. And, and I think that people still focus on that line yep. and when they see a symbol over Miami yep. four days out they're expecting the storm to be over Miami four days out and we try to get people to focus less on the details of the storm exactly how strong it is exactly where the forecast positions are because we know that's going to change we want people to focus on the hazards and on the risk from those hazards who we knew Irma was going to be a big storm the satellite almost the entire Florida Peninsula saw hurricane force wind gusts so regardless of where the center was going to go, it was going to be an impactful event. We had people in southeast Florida who seemed surprised at what they got from Irma, despite the fact they were under hurricane warning. Hurricane season starts June 1st. What's, what's your biggest concerns? You know, I think we uh, really need to make sure we're, we're ready for the, the season. I think we got to be careful comparing the previous storms to the next one. And we're going to keep uh, doing the education and reminding people that uh, each storm is completely different. Just because it hasn't happened to you uh, in the past doesn't mean it can't in the future. Hurricane Harvey was a Cat 4 storm, unprecedented in its size and impact. Meteorologist Jim Weber explains the science behind this massive storm. Harvey was the eighth named storm of the season and the first major hurricane of the 2017 season. It developed from a tropical wave in the Atlantic east of the Lesser Antilles and became a tropical storm before making landfall in Barbados. Now, once Harvey moved into the Caribbean, it dissipated very quickly because of the strong wind shear, but 
it was monitored very closely because computer models were indicating this system was likely to redevelop in a few days once that wind shear decreased. And that's exactly what happened. It moved over the Yucatan into the Bay of Campeche into warm waters and light wind shear. Perfect for reintensification all the way, in fact, up to a category four hurricane with winds of 130 miles an hour. Then it set its sights on the coastline of Texas, becoming the first major hurricane to hit the U.S. in nearly 12 years. After landfall, steering currents were weak and Harvey meandered for days, causing catastrophic flooding. Rainfall amounts in excess of 60 inches, causing Harvey to become the second most costliest tropical cyclone on record in claiming 107 lives. Jim Weber, Fox 13 Weather. Harvey? Irma and Maria were all game changers. Word got out quickly through social media. We found out firsthand right here during Irma. Meteorologist Brittany Rainey explains. In 2017, Hurricane Irma put Florida on guard. So we knew that the storm was going to be a big deal, but we hadn't had a big storm like that since the rise of social media. Many of you had questions. Chris Boex, our Fox 13 social media manager, was among those on our staff providing answers. People from all over the country who had lived here at some point, who had relatives here and were concerned about their friends or family, were regularly asking us what was going on with the storm. Hurricane Irma on a collision course right now with our state. We were getting instant real-time feedback from people saying, I'm huddled in my closet, am I going to survive? Your comments were helpful for us too. It gave us a very good indication of what was happening with the storm, but it also gave us a way of reassuring some of those folks and giving them important information in, in real time. And you didn't have to go to your TV to know what was happening with Irma. We made sure that we were streaming plenty of live coverage from, from our folks in the field, uh, from our meteorologists here in the station. Some of them were doing Facebook Lives individually. Even while we were on the air, we had other meteorologists engaging with people on Facebook uh, separately from the weather office. And many of you reached out to us to say thank you. And to get those kinds of notes, it's, it's nice to know that, that folks are, are grateful and, and that we actually made some kind of a difference. Our team will be with you again this year. And remember that you can always get weather updates on our Fox 13 News app and also on our Sky Tower radar app. Brittany Rainey, Fox 13 Weather. In my home, our pets are family. So like us, they have an emergency kit too. We stock their favorite food and treats and plenty of water. Their favorite toys, too. We pack their medicine in case they get sick. They also wear collars with tags saying they belong to us. Under their skin, they have these cool ID microchips just in case their tags are lost. Pet rescue decals on our windows alert police and firemen if something happens and we're not home. Many storm shelters don't accept animals, so before evacuating, we find pet-friendly hotels. We love our pets so much. Coming up, new innovations to keep you safe this hurricane season. Hurricane Maria was a worst case scenario for Puerto Rico. Meteorologist Tyler Eliason explains how Maria formed and why the storm was so devastating. Well, it was just a few weeks before Maria that Irma dealt a glancing blow to the tiny island of Puerto Rico. That kind of skimmed by to the north, but unlike Irma, Maria approached from the south, and it really tapped into the same environment that Irma had. Very warm waters over the western Atlantic, low wind shear, a favorable environment for a rapid strengthening storm, and we really went from a tropical storm to a Category 5 hurricane in a very short period of time. Just over 24 hours impacted some of the same tiny islands that Irma uh, really had a big hit on as well. Then continued on from there and just made a direct hit on the southern coast of Puerto Rico. Storm surge, strong winds, the strongest hurricane to hit Puerto Rico since 1928, and you can bet that Maria will certainly be remembered for generations to come. Really nowhere to hide as that just moved directly over the center of the island. 10 to 20 inches of rainfall and winds over 100 plus miles per hour. There were gusts easily over 150. As you can imagine, that really did some damage on the power grid. 96% of that power grid knocked out. 
and it's really been months to get that back online. Not only that, but the water and supplies were slow to arrive, just made for a really tough situation in Puerto Rico, and they're still fully recovering from that uh, to this day. Officially $90 billion in damage, the worst disaster in Puerto Rican history, and the third costliest storm in U.S. history. For Fox 13 Weather, I'm meteorologist Tyler Eliason. New ways to prepare often follow active hurricane seasons. I discovered a few innovative ideas recently at the National Hurricane Conference in Orlando. There's a lot of cool gadgets that can get you ready for the upcoming season. Backpacks that are disaster kits. Emergency services are there to make sure that you're safe, not to make sure that you've got all the food and water that your family needs, and that's where we come in. Our kits come with 24 servings, up to 24 servings of real food that your family really knows and likes. We give you up to six liters of water that will store for up to five years. These serve as uh, portable sources of power for both consumers and agencies alike. They're based around uh, large packs of lithium ion batteries, and they allow consumers to charge phones, tablets, uh, laptops, power small fans, uh, even small cooking devices on the go. The idea of having hot, tasty food during a long hurricane events, pretty important. This looks pretty good. It smells good, I'll say that much. Yeah. yeah. It is shelf stable for up to five years, okay. so you can keep it in your pantry and then you'll just have it whenever you need it. Mm. It's good. Mm -hmm. Tasty. Yeah. Very nice. Many people with special medical needs had to evacuate during Irma. Dr. Joe saw firsthand how shelters met the demand for care. People with special needs and their caregivers filled the USF Sundome and lined the hallways during Hurricane Irma. USF student volunteers walked the floors providing assistance. Nurses, doctors, and Tampa Fire Rescue personnel were also on site. During Irma, special needs shelters in Hillsborough were over capacity, housing over 1,700 people. I believe it was our largest evacuation <laughs> in, um, in Florida history. Allison Sisson spent Hurricane Irma at the EOC coordinating shelters. Florida law created special needs shelters for people with physical, mental, and sensory disabilities or cognitive impairments like dementia. If you are electric dependent, if you're on oxygen, or if you live in, in a mobile home, then you want to evacuate as if you're in flood zone A. And don't wait for a storm to sign up. It's too late to apply. At that point, if you're not already registered, you want to just show up to any of the open special needs shelters. Shelter evacuees or their caregivers must bring their own medications and medical supplies. Service animals are allowed to stay with their owners. Personal pets in crates are housed in a separate room. Generators kept refrigerators filled with medications and insulin cold. Large liquid and small rolling oxygen tanks were provided, as well as blood pressure checks, glucose monitoring, and even meals. When the threat was over, new friends had been created. Caregivers had become advocates for others. And for those who couldn't go back home due to power outages or storm damage, social services stepped in to help. For the Fox Medical Team, I'm Dr. Joette Chiavenko. If you're out of power and don't have the basics, what do you do? Well, Dave Osterberg discovered you become a Boy Scout. There's a couple of different techniques you can use. The first requires a spoon. And we take it and we just rub it around, rub around the whole can. After applying pressure to the spoon around the lid of the can, aha, there was success. Now, if you don't have a spoon, you can also try the solid ground. And start sliding it back and forth. Slide it back and forth. Slide it back and forth. After a couple of minutes, we started to see juice from the can on the ground. There you go. No can opener, no problem. So we've got you covered. Thanks again for watching Surviving the Storm. I'm Paul Delegato, and please stay safe.